So, hi everyone, I'm Catherine, uh, Catherine Riedel, and I am the assistant director here at the Rye Free Reading Room. We are so lucky tonight to have Ashley Covelli here from Big Flavors from a Tiny Kitchen. We love having her come. So I'm going to turn it right over to her and uh, enjoy everyone. I am so happy to be here. I love like, well, now so many local libraries in Westchester. I'm up in Ossining, but um, I love doing programs with the Rye Free Reading Room. You have like a cool group of people that I don't usually interact with because it's like so far south it's not really it's what like 20 minutes or so but it feels so far away these days um so for those of you who don't know me my name is ashley and i write about food and recipes at big flavors from a tiny kitchen um i'll put my url in the chat in case anybody wants to check out my website um i'm on social media at big flavors on twitter at big flavors blog and i've been coming up with recipes and sharing them and talking about food virtually since 2006 um, I've done some in-person cooking classes with some of the local libraries, and then in the last year and a half-ish, I started doing virtual cooking classes, and I love it because you can be in your kitchen, I can be in my kitchen, you know where your tools are, everybody can cook together and have like more than a library setup of like a hot plate and like a little tiny toaster oven. So um, this program is part of our Appy Hour, which shout out to... Can't remember who's who on your team, Catherine, but somebody came up with that. Lisa, our children's librarian. <laughs> Love the name. So we're do we do appetizers. This is I think the second or third of these that we've done. Um, and so today we're gonna make my father-in-law's Italian bruschetta recipe, which is my favorite. I put it on cheese boards. I serve it as an appetizer. Like we eat it all the time. I love it. And also falafel spiced cucumber bites. So these are two things that like if you want to have appetizers for dinner, cool. If you want to serve one of them um, before a meal. You can even like the bruschetta, you can use it as a topping for like grilled meat or tofu or fish, um, super versatile. And uh, my classes are always really laid back. If you have any questions, please feel free to unmute yourself and ask and questions, comments. If you had a really super great meal recently and you just like need to share, I totally get it. Please feel free to share. Um, so if you're cooking along with me today, I'm gonna pin my, um, I'm going to pin my two cameras. I don't think this will pin in the recording. So if you're watching the recording, I'm sorry, but I have an overhead view so you can see kind of the fun stuff that's going on a little more clearly. Um, we are going to first make the tomato mixture for the bruschetta. And you're going to need two, about two pounds of tomatoes. And this is going to be super fun. We're just going to like chop tomatoes for a while. So um, I have. I like using a mix of colors, especially if possible. It just looks really, really pretty when you do it like that. So I, I picked up this um, Wild Wonders. It's like an assortment of little like grape and cherry tomatoes. And this is a pound and a half. So I'm just going to add in a couple extra tomatoes. This is an awesome use for um, garden tomatoes in the summer, like just super, super fresh and delicious. Um, these type of tomatoes and these little Campari ones, they're like, they're good all year. So if you have to do like in the winter, you want your bruschetta fix, like you can totally use these and it'll be really good. But like farmer's market tomatoes, fantastic. Um, so because this has, does this one have, this one doesn't have holes in it. Oh yeah, it does. There's little like drainage holes in the bottom of the container. So I'm adding my couple extra tomatoes and then I'm just gonna rinse over all of them at once. Um, I had bought two packs of these yesterday and then and then I got a prize that I won from an Instagram contest from Sunset and they sent me more. So I have a ton of tomatoes, but it's not a problem. Um, the other ones I'm using today are these Kumado, same brand, they're brown tomatoes, which you maybe wouldn't think a brown tomato would be delicious, but it is. So I'm just gonna rinse all these under cold water and just kind of let it, drain for a moment. If this was coming from my garden out back, I have like a small raised bed. I might not even bother. Um, I might not bother rinsing them, but it's because I know what goes into it. Um, I did recently learn that you should never um, pick or, or trim tomatoes, like leaves or anything from tomato plants after it rains or while they're wet because it helps it spread the disease more easily which I did not know so I was very 
glad to learn that. Um, so you're, we're just gonna dice them. Doesn't matter, make them roughly the same size if you want. Um, this is, you don't have to be precious about it. You just kind of, um, I like to kind of quarter the tomatoes and then just cut on an angle to cut like the little stem bit out. And if you do compost at your house, you can keep all that stuff for your compost bin. We started recently, um, Austining has a program where they'll give you, well, you can buy a kit to, to do your compost and then um, they'll accept it for free if you don't have a place where you can put out a bin for composting. So I'm in a complex that we just have regular recycling and regular garbage, but now I've got like this little bin and I can fill it up with all the little bags and um, they, they take care of sending it to like a real composting facility that can handle a lot of different um, different types of things that I guess if you have a home composter out back, you can't necessarily put all the same types of things in. So like for instance, uh, bones. So if you have like chicken bones or something like that, um, you can compost those if you're if it's being sent to an industrial facility. But I mean, always look at the whatever the rules are for the area you, you're in. So I, I like using this little scraper with the sides because I can scrape the things in and then they don't slide off and just kind of transports things easily. Um, serrated knife is really good for cutting tomatoes. Sometimes it can be a little tricky to cut. Um, is anybody in the group growing anything this year? Have you planted a garden? Do you have any like big successes or failures for things that you've grown? I'm always curious what, what works well for other people. You can type it in the chat if you don't want to um, unmute or you can feel free to unmute and, and talk. Ooh, I didn't cut that one. These littler tomatoes. Um, I have this tool, if you've done any of my classes before, you may have seen it, it's a grape cutter, but it's got like this little cross hatch of, um, there's like serrated on the top. So you can push them through and it quarters them. You just have to watch how aggressively you squish it. Otherwise, you get like tomato seeds everywhere. I've definitely found like on the backsplash, found tomato seeds hanging out. Um, so like some of them won't fit. So just kind of put those to the side, but it does speed up the process. Um, it's something that I didn't think I would use as much as I do, but like I'm not one for a bunch of gadgets because I don't have a ton of space. But these are, this is nice for like taco night. Uh, you can do grapes, olives that don't have pits. But yeah, kind of everything just, let's see if I give you like an underside view, just kind of scoops everything into quarters. Um, you can absolutely do this with just red tomatoes too. I just think it looks pretty with the colorful ones. And like I said, I'm not, even though I like keeping them all roughly the same size, even though some of these are longer, it's not a big deal. They'll fit onto the bread. Um, this, so my father-in-law, uh, he was from Calabria, Italy, and he used to work in a machine shop and he started really early in the mornings and he would get home early and he was kind of bored and his wife didn't really cook that much. So he was like, I guess I'll start cooking. So he just kind of started experimenting with things and he's a phenomenal, was a phenomenal cook. Do the blades have to be sharpened on this thing? No, I have had this for, my son is nine and a half. I've had it for probably nine years. I've never sharpened it. It's like, they're, I don't know if you can see inside of there. They're like little tiny serrated, like little saw blades. Um, I've actually never sharpened a serrated knife either. So that's a, an interesting question. Um, there, I think I looked on Amazon today. It was like $6 or something like that. Um, so yeah, so he would cook just really kind of simple foods. He made a lot of stuff with them. Um, like potatoes and lentils and lots of soups, but his Italian dishes were all just so good. So when I first moved to New York, I, we, me and my now husband lived with his parents for a little while and um, I would cook with him. Let me give you the, um, this is 
a link if you want it um, from Amazon. That's it's an OXO brand. That's the link to the. They have a couple different colors too. So I don't think they make the green one anymore. I don't know why. <laughs> um, so yeah, I used to like I'd come home from work and me and him would like have some wine and we'd cook together and it was a great time. And I learned to write down his recipes because he would always say he doesn't know how or he would think he knew how he made them, but it was not exactly accurate. So this is my other trick with tomatoes that I really like um, these lids from the deli or from like cartons of yogurt or whatever that have the little ridge in there. If you fill it with tomatoes, and these aren't even all the same size of tomatoes, but I learned this like years, years, years ago from, I think it was from Rachel Ray on her show. You take the other lid, same style, but put the ridge down. So it kind of cups the tomatoes. You press on flat on the top and you do this kind of just saw back and forth and then you cut all the tomatoes in half really quickly so that doesn't get them small enough for this but it gives you quite a bit of help so like That's these ones brilliant. it i honestly i think i squealed like it was ridiculous like i i love tomatoes too so i use them a lot um but yeah we we will keep these until they start looking kind of funky because you can um, you know, just wash them and use them again. And it's a good way to cut down on the waste. Um, so yeah, we, every once in a while, I'll be like, oh, they're getting a little discolored or whatever. And I'll just get a, more stuff from the olive bar. Um, yeah, so it's a fun, a fun little kind of hack for it. How's your, I know Joanna's cooking along and anybody else who's cooking along sends camera, how's it going? Cool, chop, did you already chop yours before? Oh, okay. <laughs> um, yeah, so this is like, if I was having a get together and I had friends over early, like they would probably be standing on the other side of my very, very small kitchen, um, having a drink or a snack while I was cutting tomatoes. But this, um, this filling, you can put it together in advance and just store it in the refrigerator. Um, you want to let it come back to room temperature for, I'd say, at least like 15 to 30 minutes before you serve it, just because the, the juices and the oil can kind of like congeal a little bit. So um, I like letting them come to room temperature. But if I was making this for even like two or three hours from now, I would just let it hang out and marinate because like the flavors with the balsamic and everything they just kind of get better the longer that it sits um and like i said it's a great topping for things um like if you have um, even if you have just like a plain piece of grilled chicken or um shrimp you can just pop it on top of there it'll add a lot of flavor so the other thing that makes this a lot different um, and more flavorful. It's something really simple, but it adds so much flavor is when we toast the baguette, while it's still warm out of the oven, we're gonna rub a clove of garlic into the hot crusty bread. And that just like the flavor that that gives it is huge. I think you could also, you could totally do like a sweet, more of a sweet crostini. Um, with like peaches, I think would be really nice. Like, especially when they're really super ripe. Um, peaches would be nice with basil, I think. They would probably be good with a little mint and you could even like, I would maybe skip the garlic, but you could um, like dollop some ricotta cheese on top or burrata, which is, if you haven't had that, it's, it's mind blowing. It's, um, it's like fresh mozzarella, and then inside of it, it's filled like ricotta textured cheese. So it's like, if you cut into it, it just kind of like oozes cheese goodness. I'm, I'm a fan of cheese in case that isn't clear, but. Um, and, the, and the measurements on this aren't super picky either. About two pounds is good. Like I might just for the purposes of this, I might cut most of these tomatoes and then I'll cut the rest of them later. But I'll go ahead and toss the other things in here just so that it can get marinating. Um, it's also a great way to save like less than beautiful tomatoes or ones that are maybe kind of blemished or look like they need to be used really soon. 
um, there's a, in Spain, I've not been there, so I'm not speaking from like direct experience, but in Spain, they toast bread similarly and they rub, like they'll cut a tomato and like rub that into the charred bread. And that really is, adds a nice flavor too. Just like, I think just as a snack. Not all baguettes are equal. Any special name brand? Ah, awesome question. I think some things are called baguettes at the store that are not really baguettes. I, it doesn't really matter for this recipe. I got this from the Stop and Shop Bakery. Um, I like the skinnier baguettes. Um, if I'm making a scaled down version, I know Stop and Shop sells them. I don't know about other stores. Like I had a hard time at ShopRite finding a baguette recently. Um, like a half size, it's called a demi baguette. Um, so this one's just says NP French baguette. And they're pretty inexpensive. The texture inside is, there's not a ton of holes. If you get a bread that's got a lot of um, air holes and pockets in it, it, the filling or the topping will kind of fall through. You can still eat it, but it'll be really messy and not very, um, not the most user-friendly, I guess would be a good way to put it. Um, but yeah, I was making, uh, I, had a, I did a kid's class a couple of weeks ago and we were doing pan Purdue French, like a French stuffed toast and I needed a baguette for it. And I didn't have time to like go to a bunch of different stores. And the only thing I could find was this, um, like a, a bigger bread that was a lot softer and it did not, it was fine, but it didn't really work so well. Um, the texture was just kind of different. So I'm going to stop here just so I can move on to the other, um, the other things that need to go into the mix. But um, if you're still cutting, feel free to keep going. And like I said, you can always add to it later. So I'm just going to like wipe off some of this tomato seed junk. Um, I'm going to add some red onion. I use for this about a quarter cup of um, minced red onion. And the other recipe we're making today, um, I have shallots listed as a garnish. I forgot to get shallots. So I'm just gonna slice a little extra of the red onion really thinly and put it on the side for that recipe. Um, peel that. And then I'm gonna do like, a little, just a little slice so I can get some pretty um, like half moon, quarter moon, more like a quarter moon shape um, and just thinly slice these and I'll stick them to the side for the other recipe. And if, if, if raw onions are not your thing, you can let them sit into, in with some cold water for like five, 10 minutes and that'll really take some of the like sting out of it. Um, cause they can sometimes be a little potent, but usually, um, red onions are the least oniony, um, uh, least oniony and then yellow onions, but shallots are a great uh, alternative. If you want like a much milder flavor, a recent Trader Joe's Bronzino, I, was it whole the Bronzino or was it like fillets? Because I have only, I feel like I only ever see Bronzino um whole like at restaurants and stuff they were frozen from turkey i'm sorry frozen from turkey okay and it's fillets like little pieces like little fillets of fish yeah. it's halves of uh the branzino so the skin is on the uh, fish oh. so you, and that's great inside down it comes out of this world very good i um i, I see that a lot at Ooh, this onion is making me tear up. Um, I'm not mincing mine up too finely, but you can go back and forth on it if you want to. It, it mellows out kind of as it sits in here. Um, Bronzino, I think the first time I saw that was at Ocean House Restaurant in Croton. And my husband ordered it and it was like a really big, like the whole fish with the eye and everything. We were there with our friends and our friend was like, the eye is the best part. And he ate the eyeball because he liked it, but also I think to kind of like freak his wife out because <laughs> she was like not having it. But, um, but yeah, Trader Joe's has some really great stuff. And honestly, if you're not somebody who has access to like a restaurant supply store um, or like fish market, frozen seafood is great because a lot of times at 
grocery stores, the the seafood that you see, like shrimp and salmon and everything, has actually already been frozen and thawed. So it's fresher to buy it frozen, keep it in your freezer, and then thaw it out at home whenever you're going to use it. Um, and I like thawing under cold, either cold running water, or sometimes I'll put it in a bowl of cold water in the fridge overnight, and then I'll take it out a little bit before I want to use it, just in case it's not all the way thawed. But yeah, seafood, having seafood like shrimp thaws really fast. You can just thaw it under running cold water. It's really great to kind of keep it home for like a last minute, like, what, are you, what am I going to make with this like can of cannellini beans and some pasta and some shrimp and capers or whatever. Um, so, okay, in the tomatoes, I got about a quarter cup of red onions. I'm going to add a quarter cup of extra virgin olive oil. In this, because we're not cooking it, I really like to use extra virgin. If I was just, if this was something I was sauteing, I would use regular olive oil. And if you find that you like your filling saucier, I mean, it'll, the liquids will come out of the tomatoes a bit as it sits, but if you want a, a little more oil in there, go for it. Put onions in the freezer for chopping for a short time, eliminates fumes and teary eyes. That's an awesome tip. I will, but you peel it first, because like how long would you put it in? Because you cutting through something frozen would also be tricky. Like I'm wondering if there's like an optimal amount of time for that. We're gonna add about a tablespoon of balsamic. Very good. I love I love these hacks though. I try them sometimes like. I have a really, really good one for, oh, my, my lid is clogged, hang on. I have a really um, fun way to cut mangoes that I'm anxious to share. I think I shot a video for it like two years ago and then never ended up doing anything with it. <laughs> Cause it's, uh, it's hard. And my son, he's nine, he's actually learning to do some, um... all right, what is happening here? Sorry, my balsamic is being, <sighs> Oh, this is balsamic glaze, that's why. All right, I got the wrong thing. Let's see. Do I have regular balsamic? Maybe I don't. So this is where improvising is fine. I'm gonna use, oh, here we go. There's my balsamic. Balsamic glaze is super thick and apparently it can clog the, um, the top. I do have regular balsamic. If I didn't, I would substitute maybe white wine vinegar, apple cider vinegar. Balsamic's really the best for this though. Um, and if you have aged balsamic, that's fine. It's just the balsamic glaze is really sugary and sticky and sweet. And I don't think that would work quite as well in here. All right, I'm gonna add a half a teaspoon of kosher salt. And again, this is like after it sits, you wanna taste it and see if it needs a little more. Sometimes it does. Um, just kind of depends on your tomatoes. And if you're using table salt that's really fine grain, you'll want to use half the amount, so just a quarter teaspoon. Um, because more grains will take up the same amount of space. So you don't want to make it over salty. You can always add more. All right. Um, salt, pepper, balsamic, olive oil. So the only thing left is a quarter cup of fresh basil leaves. Um, Actually, these are from my garden. The basil and the parsley for today are from my garden. And then easy way to um, kind of cut a bunch of basil at once. If you have fingernails, you can just kind of like pinch at the base of the leaf. Just kind of like pinch it with your fingernail to pull it off easily. And then you stack the leaves together. Kind of in one big stack. And then you roll them up into like a little, I think Martha Stewart says like a little cigar. So you like roll it up like that and then just kind of thinly slice across. And that's called a chiffonade. It's a French word because they look like little ribbons. So you get these like really frilly little ribbons of basil. Um, if you were to be garnishing something with basil, like this is getting mixed in, it's going to be sitting in the oil and everything. But if you were to be using basil in a dish at the end, I always recommend adding it at the end 
to garnish because it turns brown pretty quickly after it's been um, chopped. So you can like tear it like on a, like a margarita pizza or something. You can just tear the leaves in half and just scatter them about or you can slice them like this, but they'll be the greenest if you do it kind of last thing. Same works for mint, um, anything with the leaf kind of that shape. So that is all there is to this filling. It's really not complicated. It's really easy ingredients, especially in the summer if you have basil outside. Um, I'm just gonna stir it and then set it to the side. And while we're doing the other things, every once in a while, I'll just come stir it again. So that's why I really like all the colors. It's just really, really pretty. But a fully red bruschetta, delicious. And my father always said bruschetta, not, uh, I've heard how snam, now I'm questioning how other people, how I hear other people say it sometimes, bruschetta. He always said bruschetta. And so I'm like, I'm gonna default to whatever you say since you lived in Italy and spoke Italian and then French before English. So I'm just setting that out of the way. And Joanna, how are you doing over there? Doing all right? Okay. Are you ready to move on to the, um, the baguette toasting? Okay. So I like to broil the baguette to get it nice and toasty. If you have a grill and you're outside, you could grill the bread. You could, um, do a griddle or even a skillet, like a cast iron skillet would be really um, good. Just like oil it lightly and just sear the slices until they get brown. But I'm gonna broil. So I have this like little half oven up top. It's a smaller size, but you wanna make sure your rack is on the top, the oven rack is on the top row right under the heating element. And I'm gonna put on broil and high. And for broiling with an electric stove, electric oven, which is what I have, you leave the door cracked open a little bit. Mine has a, like it kind of stops itself when it's a jar or you can open it fully. So let it stop there. I had somebody in the class once said she didn't have, it didn't have a hinge like that. And so I told her to grab a wooden spoon, has to have a wooden handle, don't do something with a plastic handle, but you can set it in here just so the wood is touching and just kind of pinch it in there and it'll keep it propped open. Um, so with an electric stove or oven, um, the heating element can't properly measure the temperature. If you keep it closed, it thinks it's hot enough so it'll kick off. If you leave it open, the air kind of circulates and it just stays on so you're getting even heat the whole time. If you have a gas range, just leave it, on, uh, leave it closed, it's fine. I'm gonna use a serrated knife. So one that's got the little bumpy, kind of like the large version of what was in this little tool. Um, serrated knife works better for cutting bread because instead of pushing down, you just kind of saw back and forth. So um, I'm gonna, let's see, how thick do I usually cut these? About, hmm, should I say on here? Cause if not, oh yeah, about a quarter inch thick. It doesn't really matter how thick I'm just removing the end. It doesn't really matter how thick as long as they're the same thickness. I think a quarter inch-ish is nice because it's sturdy enough to hold your topping, but it's not so thick that you're like eating a ton, ton of bread without all of the toppings. So, um, and then I'm just cutting it on an angle. So instead of straight across, which you completely can cut straight across, it gives it a little more surface area. So you can see, I kind of have like an angle here. So I'm just gonna cut all the way down. And you can see it's nice and crusty. I bought this yesterday. There are some holes in the bread, but not a lot. So the filling really, the toppings really stay on there nicely. So I'm gonna cut enough to fill. Sometimes I can get the whole um, whole baguette on one tray. It kind of depends. Cause again, they, they do vary in, in um, size. I, I saw some from at Acme that are like Panera packaged ones and they're very, uh, much wider than the other baguettes that I usually see. So I'm just lining them up so they have some space on here. Um, and then we'll drizzle with a little oil, flip them around, kind of rub them around, and we'll put them in the broiler. I'm going to turn this fan on. Let me know if that makes too much noise and I think my microphone will 
kind of cancel it out, but definitely let me know. Um, does anybody like, has anybody had uh, a dish like this at a restaurant that was ex exceptionally good? Because sometimes it's, they're just like, they do such a great job that you're like, even though I could make it at home, I want to get it out. I know um, risotto and Thornwood, they do a really good one. I tend to, when I go to a restaurant, I like to order things that I don't normally make at home. Do you rub the bread with the garlic cloves after they come out of the oven? So they're gonna get nice and crispy and then we're gonna, it'll give us like a surface to rub the garlic against. And this too, if you wanna make the bread ahead of time, you can toast your bread, rub it with the garlic and then let it cool completely and then put it in um, like a, an airtight container. Um, I will say with leftover bread, you a lot of times have to like put the topping on it and let it sit a little bit longer so that it um, really like re-softens the bread because it could get a little bit stale, but you can totally do it the day before if you want. Um, so I'm gonna just drizzle lightly with olive oil. some of these crumbs. Drizzle slightly and then I just kind of like flip them around and rub them so that the, both sides get coated but you don't want to like fully saturate them. So I just kind of like tap them together, rub them around. And how long they need to cook kind of depends on your broiler. Um, I tend to do like, um, but I start like three minutes, I'll check them. So I'll set a timer for three minutes. Um, I need a little bit more oil actually. I'll just check them, flip them, because you want both sides to get a little charred. You can told, I mean, you can absolutely get away with just doing one side. There's an Italian restaurant in White Plains called Boca that makes, is that bocha? I'm trying to think how my husband would say that. Boca that makes good tomato bruschetta and tomato caprese, but yours is looking awesome. Thank you so much, Liz. That's so nice of you to say. I joke that I married into an Italian family, so I'd have an excuse to like have garlic more often. But um, yeah, nice caprese. You could, so you could get a big ball of mozzarella and slice it and top it with this mixture. And it would be like a bruschetta caprese situation. That would be really, really good actually. All right, so I'm gonna put this in again, right under the um, elements for, we'll start with three minutes and just check it. Alexa, set a timer for three minutes. Did you have a question, Joanna? Oh no, we um we did get some fresh mozzarella. So you're saying um, cut it up and, and mix it in or we've been I eating it as we, you totally could. You could also, um, you could slice it and just put, you could slice it, put a piece on your bread after it's done and then top that with this tomato mixture. You could totally mix it in like if you cube it. Um, but I was saying like, you could do like, you sliced the ball, um, like kind of fanned it out on a plate and then drizzled that over the top. It was a very like fancy. Yeah, that's um, thank you. Yeah, absolutely. And yes, mozzarella fresh from Arthur Avenue in the Bronx is the best. That's where my mother-in-law grew up. So um, my, my first time on Arthur Avenue was during that big blackout at this point, like what, 12 years ago. Um, I was like so excited to see all the things and then everything went dark and it was very confusing. I'm peeling, I like to do two cloves of garlic just to make sure I have enough. I just peeled them, I didn't smash them. And then I'm gonna just slice a little bit off the end just so I have um, a fresh, freshly cut piece. And this is what, when it comes out, when I can handle, I'm gonna rub into, it just kind of like melts down in. Cheese, low moisture, so it melts easily. Um, well, mozza, fresh mozzarella would be high moisture, but there are um, that are melty. Things like a Parmesan um, wouldn't melt very easily. Um, this would be good, you know, you could do, um, 
mint and feta instead too. That would be kind of good. So I'm just going to put these on standby. This dish would be nice served on a small plate with fish or sardines on the side or cut up some pieces of pepperoni to prasad with pieces of cheese like Swiss and cheddar. Too. Yes, 100%. My husband had a sardine sandwich for lunch. It's too bad that I didn't have this earlier. Um, ooh, my, my bread looks like it's getting toasty. I'm going to go ahead and flip. Alexa, cancel the timer. So if you can see on my tray, they're already getting nice and golden, but not like black. So I'm going to take some tongs and flip every one of them over. So because the bottoms are still just plain, um, not toasty at all. So I'm just going to flip them. You could too, you could do this with like crackers. It wouldn't be, it wouldn't be quite the same, but still be tasty. I'm very much for like, however you would enjoy it. It doesn't matter if it like follows the rules of whatever it's supposed to be. However you can enjoy it, I think is fine. Um, and if you do notice that your oven, like say half of your tray, like the top half seems to be browning more, you can take the tray, um, rotate it 180 degrees and put it back in to get the other sides a little toasty. Okay. I'm gonna put that back in. I'm gonna check it. Alexa, set a timer for one minute. It's super handy if you have one of those to do, um, if you have multiple timers set, like Thanksgiving, it's amazing because you can have one going for your potatoes, your all the different things. Um, all right, so don't wanna get too ahead of myself because that's gonna come out and we're gonna rub everything, but Yes, it would be nice to serve with mixed olives. I agree. I, have you tried, I'm gonna open my fridge for a second. Have you tried Castle Vetrano olives? They're like, I call them the olive for people who hate olives because they're this like really soft green and they're really buttery. Like they're not super, um, they're not super, super salty uh, or briny. I, I happen to like briny, salty olives, but some people it's a little too much for them. So those ones are a really nice addition too. Um, what, what is the name brand, please? I'm sorry? The name brand? Oh, oh. The, uh, the, the brand that I ha just happen to have right now, Alexa, stop, is Mazetta. But they, they have all different brands. The one thing I would say is look for pitted because it is super annoying, especially if you have a big jar. It's really, really annoying to have to pit them all. Um, okay. Yep, you're welcome. I'm just gonna spin this around. Let it go for another few seconds. And then I will turn my broiler off, which will be lovely because it gets very hot in here in the warm weather. Um, I can, we can go ahead and drain a can of chickpeas for the next dish if you're making the next one with me. Um, and if you, I don't do a whole lot with it yet. I need to find some more ways to use it, but the liquid that's in the can is also known as aquafaba. And it can be used as a substitute for um, egg whites in a lot of recipes. So you can actually whip it with an electric beater and they'll come to peaks. You can make meringue with it and stuff. It's really a really interesting ingredient. I just tend to forget to use it and then I end up dumping it. But um, just so you know that that is a usable ingredient and it's good if you if you're friends with anybody who's vegan and you want to look for like an egg free an egg substitute for things um so i'm just letting the bread cool for a moment before i handle it and rub them with garlic i'm gonna strain the liquid out of the can and rinse them and you get when you um rinse canned beans you get this like foamy up top, I usually rinse until it stops foaming. So it's getting like extra sodium and starches and stuff out of there. I'm sure you can use um, dried beans for this that you've cooked, uh, chickpeas. I just have never done it. I love Mazetta olives. Goyas are pretty, uh, yeah, also very trusting taste. Yeah, there's a ton of brands. Um, BJ's, I, I shop at BJ's Wholesale Club and they have 
a uh, couple other brands too that are really nice. But I think that's where I got the ones that weren't pitted and it was like the economy sized brand, which was a little frustrating, but all right. So I just, I'm going to start with one of these and while it's warm, that cut end, just kind of rub it in there and you'll feel it kind of sliding around. Don't do, you don't need to do both sides. Just do the one side. I mean, you could, could do both sides. You're like super, super, super into garlic, but so you'll notice like the more of them you rub, just be careful the sheet pan is hot. So be careful how you tackle this, but you can hold it in your hands and just kind of rub like that. But um, it'll start kind of dwindling down and then switch to your other, your other cloves. That's why I like having the second one kind of on deck. Um, and you, you can do this if you forget and you do it after they're, they've already cooled, that's fine. Not a big deal. It just, it works a little better. It absorbs into the bread more when it's still hot. Um, we, I think our next, I have two more programs, I think um, scheduled with Rye Adult, the Adult Services de Department room. What is it? Adult Services? What is the right, what is the word you use? Adult that? Services Department. Department. Um, coming up in yeah. July. The picnic one yeah we have a picnic coming up is that jill i have the date written down but I have it here i'm looking it up actually just so i make sure i say the right I have it on my printout but it's buried underneath tomatoes and <laughs> garlic peels <laughs> so i've rubbed all these i'm just going to set them aside while we make the second recipe which is super easy Yeah, so July 10th. Nope, I'm the wrong one. No, I was gonna say, I've, got, I've got Wednesday, July 28th at 6.30. We're gonna make, it's not an appy hour, um, but it's a, we're doing like a Mediterranean kind of flair um, picnic spread. So um, we're making a chicken salad with lots of dill and some um, pickles and a couple different types of onions. Uh, it's really good, it's one of my favorites and homemade hummus with seasoned pita chips and then i'll show you how you can like jazz it up with some things from the store so if you want to take it for a picnic and if you wanted to do a board with it you could do that like stuffed grape leaves and stuff trader joe's actually has really great ones what do you think of using a um, press and putting a tiny amount of garlic in each slice you could do that um it would it would sit on top this really like pushes it into the bread but you could totally do that um you could also infuse oil with garlic and brush that on. That would work too before you um, before you cooked them. I sprinkle the bread with garlic powder and cayenne powder and drizzle extra virgin olive oil on each piece before adding the decorated toppings. I like that too. There's like I said, there's no like wrong way to do it. It's like whatever you like. And if you happen to not like garlic, you can skip the garlic. You can send it to me and I will eat your garlic for you. Um, all right, let's give this tomato mix a stir. You can see like all the juices kind of in there now. I'll give it a stir. And then I'm putting it on top of my espresso machine. That's what's over here that you can't see. Gotta get very creative in this kitchen. All right, so these falafel spiced cucumber bites, this is a recipe that I came up with for Stony Field. I did a lot of work with them years ago. And um, actually a lot of my favorite recipes that I came up with were for them. Um, we eat a lot of yogurt in my house. So initially this was written for using their double cream yogurt, but um, I don't think they make it anymore. They've discontinued a lot of products. Like they don't test well. And some of them I'm like heartbroken that they don't make anymore, but I'm going to add the drained, rinsed, rinsed, drained chickpeas into the food processor. You could use a blender if you have it. I think the food processor works better for this, um, for pu pureeing, if you have it. If you don't, don't worry about it. Um, were you doing any virtual programs on any dessert recipes? Um, yes, I don't have any planned right now. I do have, um, I have an events page on my website that I put everything there, uh, everything that I book. Um, some classes I do through libraries that are free for patrons. Some I do um, on my own. So those ones I charge for, um, but I have lots, a lot of variety and a lot of like kids classes. I'm doing some for um, Greenberg Library next month, a couple kids classes this summer. I'm doing some stuff with the Somers Library. 
I do stuff with Asaning all the time because that's where I live and I love them. Um, we, can, okay. we can chat about doing a baked program maybe. In the yeah, fall. I did one for the teen room. Oh yeah. Um, at the Rye Library mm -hmm. a couple months ago. I also don't like doing baking programs in the summer because it's very hot. <laughs> but um, yeah, you can always feel free to check there or um, you can always contact me if you have any special requests or like private parties, that type of stuff, like family get together, Zoom cooking classes. I do, I do all sorts of stuff. But um, so this is a super simple recipe. You can serve it as a dip. I like doing it on top of cucumbers as little elegant party bites. Um, chickpeas. We're going to do a quarter cup plus two tablespoons of Greek yogurt. So there's, this is some of my homemade yogurt. Oh, wait, I do have Greek yogurt. I usually make, um, I strain some of it and have both Greek and regular yogurt um, on hand always, but I ran out once. I make it in my Instant Pot and I don't have enough room for it in the refrigerator. It's total like first world problem, but um, make sure if you're buying Greek yogurt, you buy plain, not vanilla. Very, very important distinction. Um, so there's four tablespoons and a quarter cup. So I'm gonna do six tablespoons or you can do the quarter cup plus two tablespoons. If you're using regular Greek yogurt, I'm sorry, regular yogurt that's not Greek, so it's not uh, Greek style, it's not the thicker kind, you might need to start with a little bit less because it's runnier. So like if I was gonna use my homemade yogurt, I would maybe start with a quarter cup and then add more if it needs to thin out a little. Just kind of have to see how, how the texture goes. So. We're gonna add two tablespoons of tahini. If you can find it, squeezy bottle tahini is like the best invention. I like wanna hug whoever did it. Tahini is a, it's a paste made from sesame seeds and the squeezy bottle, you just literally pour it right into there. Otherwise it comes in a can or jar and it's like natural peanut butter where it separates. So you really have to stir it. And if you keep it in the refrigerator, kind of hard to stir. So once I found, there's a couple brands that make this. This one is Mighty Sesame Company. Um, you can find this at a lot of regular grocery stores or like Whole Foods or whatever, or online. It makes it infinitely easier in my opinion. Um, okay, so Greek yogurt, tahini, chickpeas. We're gonna add a tablespoon of lemon juice. Uh, I prefer using fresh lemon juice, but if you have the bottled kind, that's fine. Um, I'm not gonna measure it exactly. And I will taste the filling and if it needs more, we'll add more. Um, and then I know some of you have definitely seen this before, but um, these type of juicers, I always used to think you put it in this way because it fits the curve, but you do it this way because this presses down and you get more juice out of it. And then you're left with kind of these little like citrus discs and always like tilt it because it'll, you'll get a little extra out of there but it really gets kind of everything out, which I think is very handy. Um, we're gonna add a half a teaspoon each of ground cumin, coriander, and paprika. Actually, I have um, magnetic knife racks on my walls, uh, my wall over there in the kitchen, and um, I stick these to them. It's just some of my spices I've got a ton. Where did my half teaspoon? go. There it is. Okay, so paprika. These are these are inspired by a falafel recipe that I make um, that's on my website that I really like. I just wanted a way to make like have the flavors of that but make it easier. Um, and I also have a falafel spiced chickpea flatbread recipe that you can use either homemade or store-bought tzatziki and you spice the chickpeas and then um, you put them on top, it's really, really good. And you like drizzle on the tahini and stuff at the end. Okay, so that was a half teaspoon each cumin, coriander, paprika, and we'll do a quarter teaspoon of kosher salt. And then uh, about an eighth of a teaspoon of fresh cracked black pepper. I'm not, don't, don't actually measure that, but just a couple turns. Um, if you're using like already ground, black pepper, use less because it's a lot more potent. Um, some of that salt pepper. And, okay, so we want to chop up 
finely two tablespoons of cilantro and parsley and we're going to put half in here so all of my room i'm going to take some cilantro you can use the stems also i i don't mind the stems some people don't like them but we're going to mince them pretty finely so i don't think it really matters and then i've got some parsley from the garden i'm just gonna chop them together and divide it in half by eyeball the other the other half is just for garnishing um and garnishing totally optional you don't have to do it and actually there was on the plant right next to this parsley there was a little like baby um praying mantis have you ever seen the baby ones they're like little itty bitty there it's I had to look twice because I was like, what is that? So I'm just kind of like mixing this together as I chop it. So it's a mix of both herbs. If you have microgreens, like sometimes in the summers, especially from the farmer's market, you could put those on top for the garnish. That'd be really pretty. So I'm just going to like grab half-ish and put it in my food processor. And then gonna get get crafty here and use the other side of my tomato lid set up for these normally I would clean while I'm cooking but that's not interesting for most people I don't think to watch on a virtual cooking class but so I usually post after a class I post on Instagram a cooking class aftermath my son loves it it's just my kitchen's like demolished um, but the video uploads have been weird. It stretches things. So I'm, I'll record it, but I might not do it today. What's the difference between parsley and cilantro? Are you using curly or flat? I'm using um, flat leaf Italian parsley. The curly one and the flat one, I think they pretty much taste the same. I find the flat one easier to work with. And I just, I like the texture of it better, especially if there's bigger pieces. Cilantro is, a, it's actually the coriander plant when it grows and makes the leaves and that's got more of a flavor some people don't like it because they feel like it's a little soapy um and um it's used in a lot of like latin cuisine and asian cuisine and it's got um it's got a different flavor but if you don't like cilantro or you can't find it you can use just parsley that's totally fine um Kosher salt sold in a large box, unable to find a small size. It's hard to find a small size. Sometimes, I don't have it up there. Sometimes you can find like a canister, kind of like this size of kosher salt, um, if that's helpful. Not always though, it's, it's usually fairly inexpensive. Um, or you could go to like a spice store, Penzi's. There's one in um, Connecticut, Danbury maybe, or Westport, um, and you can, I think they sell them in bags, so you could get a smaller amount like that, perhaps. Uh, let's just see if I have everything in here. Chickpeas, Greek yogurt, tahini, lemon, cumin, coriander, paprika, salt, pepper, parsley, and cilantro. We're just going to puree this. Are you doing all right over there, Joanna? I see an arm. Oh, there she is. Good? OK. So I'm just going to close this and puree it. And then I'll use a spatula to scrape the sides down to get kind of the bigger chunks. You just want it pretty smooth. Um, and depending if you're gonna pipe it, you wanna make sure that it, there's no big chunks that won't fit through your um, piping fit. Thank you so much, Faith. That's so very sweet of you. I am, I appreciate that. I am, very easily enthusiastic about a lot of things because I think like life is awesome. There's so many cool things and um, I just, cooking is something that everybody, um, everybody has to do to some extent and you might as well make it fun. You know what I mean? Um, I'm just gonna be scraping this into my little squeezy bottle. Again, you can just scoop it with a spoon. You could use a little disher like this. Um, you could use a plastic bag fill it and then cut off the tip and pipe it. But I'm just gonna put some in here. Um, I actually got into doing cooking like 
for a job accidentally because I, I my background's in graphic design and I was at a job that kind of like sucked my soul out of my body a bit. It was just not very creative, um, which is frustrating as an artist when you want to do something creative. And so I figured at the end of the day, we got to eat. I might as well make it look pretty. And I started taking pictures of it. And that was in 2006 before like food blogging was really a thing. Um, so yeah, that's kind of how I got into it. And it's been like such a cool way to meet people and where did you buy the excellent lemon squeezer? Um, they sell these at a lot of grocery stores, actually. But um, this one I got on Amazon. Here is this is a link. I have I have an Amazon shop page, and I put all my like recommendations and stuff in there. And so, if you purchase something through my link, it doesn't cost you anymore. I just found it for you, and I get like 0.001 percent. So it's not much, but it's nice. Um, and I love to help people find things. Ashley, Susan also asked if you could explain how um, cilantro tastes again. So um, I will explain that. I'm just going to tell you, I'm going to cut these into about half inch thick coins. And half of this, I'm going to show you a different trick to make it look a little fancier. Um, cilantro, it's similar to parsley. It's a little, hang on, let me get, let me, let me choose some cilantro. It's like, I mean, it's soapy is not a good word, but it's it's like fresh and clean. Um, a little citrusy, maybe. It's if if you've had guacamole out at a restaurant, you've probably had cilantro that's in there. It's just like the way Italians would use parsley in a recipe. A lot of other countries use cilantro, or um, it's just kind of a not super overpowering, but but nice herb. Um, I'm sorry if that was not a great description. Um, you can see, I don't have a parsley leaf to show you because I used all my parsley, but the leaves on cilantro whew, are a little, they're a little wispier. They're not quite as sturdy as a flat leaf parsley. And you can see they're like kind of zigzaggy, but like flowery. Parsley is a little more jagged, I feel like, except for the curly parsley. If if curly parsley was flattened, it would look like cilantro. That's that's what I'm gonna go with. Um, and it's, I mean, it's not expensive out at the store if you ever wanna tr just try it, just so you know. Um, I have a guacamole recipe that I love. That's probably one of the most frequent ways I use cilantro. So I just have discs of cucumber. Um, one way to make it look a little fancier, if you're doing like cocktail party or like a tea party, these would be really cute on like a tea party spread. You can take a peeler. I'm like, what is this word? Vegetable peeler. And you can peel a strip and then rotate it, skip a little space, peel another strip, peel another strip and another strip and then slice it. You can also use a um, the tines of a fork and scrape down the edge to get like a different kind of pattern. But then you'll see you get this like striped look. It's just like it's something very small you can do that makes it look a little more fun. Um, like I was saying, my neighbor is going to be the recipient of some of these. She actually when I um, when I first made this recipe, I brought it over to her house for a party and I made some, some, I didn't put the sriracha on at the end because it's spicy and there was a lot of kids there. Her kids and my son loved it. It wasn't too spicy for them. They ate it up. So they're like super excited for this. Um, so got my platter. I'll do those ones later. You just take your mixture and you can pipe it. I usually like, I'm, I'm missing a piping tip that um, this little squeezy bottle came with a bunch of different tips. There's one that's got like ridges. So it does like a scallopy kind of design. Um, if you saw the picture on the, the recipe cards that came with this, that's the tip that I used. Um, and I've got a chickpea piece blocking. I didn't blend it up quite enough. 
So chapstick is a really good way to uncork these. So oh, this bottle, it unscrews here and then the tip comes off. And they have, a, there's like a whole bunch of different tips that it comes with, but I'm just gonna press this through to get that clump out. Um, Yeah, so that's one way to do them. Anything else? Okay. So you can squeeze. You can do my, where did I put my cookie, cookie scoop? Um, there's numbers inside of cookie scoops on this little piece that flops back and forth. Like this one says 50. It corresponds to how much volume they hold. So there's all sorts of different sizes from like really big ones to really small ones. And you can look up online to see like which ones, um, like what the equivalent is like teaspoon wise or tablespoon wise. So you can do it like that, do a little scoop or you can just take a spoon or a little knife. One of these little tiny things and just spread it on top. I've also done this where I cut up a bunch of veggies and I put the, this mixture in a bowl and serve it alongside and I just garnish the bowl and it's great. It looks really, really pretty. So to garnish these, use any or all of these things or none of them, whatever you wanna do. But I'm gonna do a little paprika, kind of like I'm deviling eggs. So I have a fan on, so it's blowing. So a little of that. Um, I've got some of those reserved thinly sliced. Uh, I've got red onions. I would normally do shallots. Just for a little color up on top. And then sprinkle these herbs on. It's funny garnishing a half, a half finished plate. Um, and then like sometimes I'll do a little bit of tomato. You could quarter them again if you like, or just little slices. Um, you just like stick it in there. It's nice because the filling is sturdy enough to kind of hold on to different toppings. And then um, I like putting a little sriracha over the top. I put a lot of it on my um, falafel when I make falafel. Um, yes, mint would be great. What is the piping device called? It is a silicone. Well, we want to go gentle on the sriracha. Um, it's a silicone decorating. I made sure to like save the links to these handily for this because I knew people always ask when I use those things. Um, this is decorator bottle kit. I'm trying to get it's an OXO or OXO. I don't know which way they prefer to say it, but I'm trying to get them to make a bigger one because um, I use it for cake decorating but also for stuff like this. Well, this is one that was scooped, but. Um, okay, so that's this. And then if we wanna plate up some of the, we don't have much room here. Um, plate up some of the bruschetta. We'll do a little plate. Just take some of the bread. And what I would do if I was serving this at a party is I would just do a bowl, maybe not quite this big bowl. I might get like a smaller, a little more delicate bowl and um, put the bowl on one end of a platter, fan out the, the bread and let, let people spoon their, cell, their own filling. So I like making sure to get some of the tomatoes on there and also like a little bit of this juice because like it's really nice soaked into the bread. And yeah, that is it. You can garnish it with more fresh, my light just got brighter, um, with more fresh basil if you'd like. But those are our two appetizers. If you made them today or if you're planning to make them sometime and you wanna share a photo with me, I would love to see it. You can um, tag me on social media at Big Flavors. I like having people use the hashtag cook big flavors, but you don't have to. Um, but if you like to, that's cool. It's an easier way for me to find them. Um, you can also email them either to Catherine or to me. Um, a multitude of kitchen gadgets, TJ Maxx, home goods, excellent prices. Yes, we used to, and we used to have, um, oh no, that was a different Marshalls thing. Yeah, they have a lot of things there that are um, 
like discounted either they're like slightly chipped or something there's um there's a place in Lake Mohegan I'm blanking on the name of it home sense or something like that I got this like amazing Portuguese style baking dish for like nine dollars it's crazy um so this is all the appetizers for today let me see if I had any other notes of importance oh our next appy hour so aside from the Turkish um or the Mediterranean kind of picnic spread one we're having an appy hour Tuesday September 21st so we'll pick it up again in the fall um, don't know yet what we're going to make, going to think about it, um, but I'm always open to suggestions and I want to thank everybody for joining me and I hope Joanna, I hope your appetizers for dinner. Oh my God, they look great. Yeah. They look great. <laughs> and it's so cool, like aside from like, we don't live super far apart from each other, but it's so cool to be able to like share a meal with somebody like from another place. It's like all my family's long distance. So like we could cook together and then like have a meal together. It's just, it's so fun. Is sriracha the same as hot sauce? It's a type of hot sauce. So it's a chili sauce uh, made from sun ripened chilies, ready to use in soup, stews, pasta, pizza, whatever. It's not like a normal hot sauce. It's kind of got more of a, I think it, well, it's a little thicker for one. If you wanted to substitute something else, um, let's see, you could do, oh. The only thing you can't see in my kitchen is my refrigerator, which is right right next to us. Um, wanted to substitute something you could do, Harissa. And where's my? Here we go, chili garlic sauce. Okay. So here are the two other things I would recommend if you don't have sriracha. This is a chili garlic sauce, and you can kind of see there's um bits of chili flakes in there again it's a little thicker and then harissa this one's a mild it's a moroccan red pepper sauce so we're kind of like in the same it's a little thicker too it's kind of in the same um can we have the address so we can all indulge <laughs> well um you know i've done in-person events at different places before and they're a lot of fun but these recipes are so easy you can totally make them yourself i i believe in you <laughs> Thank you guys so much. This was wonderful. Does anybody have any other questions or comments? Awesome. Thank you so much, Ashley. You were amazing as always. Thank you. I wish I could share with you. <laughs> like press it through the computer. <laughs> Thank you, Ashley. It was a lot of fun. Thank you. Enjoy your dinner. I hope you have some fun beverages to enjoy with it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Susan. Thank you so much.